Okay, so we've had a look at the basis of the genetic code, and before we look at transcription and translation, we need to make sure we know two important molecules that are involved in that process. So first of all, we've got mRNA. mRNA stands for messenger RNA, and that's exactly what it is. It's a messenger. It's going to take the information from the DNA out of the nucleus and send it to the ribosome where it can be translated into a protein. The process of making messenger RNA is called transcription, and we'll have a look at that in another video. Like DNA, mRNA is a nucleic acid, but there are some key differences. It's single-stranded, so if you look at the image, you can see that this purple strand represents the mRNA. It's been transcribed here, and it's complementary to the DNA sequence. However, there are a couple of distinctions on there. Um, other than it being just a straight up complementary copy. So single stranded, not double stranded. It's got ribose instead of deoxyribose as part of its backbone. And we've looked at the structure of mRNA, of RNA molecules and deoxyribose molecules. It's got, which is a key distinction you'll notice, it's got uracil instead of thymine. So what that means is where there would be a T if this was a DNA base, um, it's not a T, it's a U for uracil. Now, there's a range of reasons for that. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to do a bit more reading. But essentially, thymine is a more stable molecule, so it's better to have thymine as part of a DNA molecule. Um, whereas, due to the nature of mRNA, it's not so much of an issue, and it's also uh, like a lower energy demand in order to, to use that. So, uh, uracil is found on the mRNA instead. If you look at the other strand of the DNA, um, which is worth pointing out, we'll go over this in transcription as well, but you'll be able to tell that the actual bases that it would have combined with on the DNA, it's exactly the same along the mRNA. So C to G, this is where it's been separated. So T matched to A, just as it does on the mRNA, and where you would see the thymine bases. So it would have gone T, G, T, it's different. So if it comes to you having to write out or interpret DNA to an mRNA molecule, you know it's going to be the same as the complementary strand. You're just going to be switching thymine for uracil. Now, a little bit of an introduction to transcription and pointing out the codons because they're going to be important later on. Um, during transcription, your mRNA is built up by complementary base pattern. And it, as we just mentioned, it uses the DNA as a template. The DNA's base triplets get converted into mRNA codons. So just to briefly point this out, as we've looked at here, DNA codons, um, base triplets, which we'll see why it's important to put these in triplets. Um, but if you've looked at the other videos, you'll see how that works in terms of amino acids. The mRNA would be transcribed across T, A, A to U because there's no thymine, C to G, G to C, C to G, A to U, no thymine, and so on. Why we're looking at this now, though, is just to point out that this genetic code is non-overlapping, and that'll be really crystal clear when you look at translation. But what it means is essentially each base is only part of one triplet and codon. So each base is used once. So if this is the codon TAC, sorry, AUG is probably better to talk about, AUG, that means that when the tRNA molecule we'll look at in a moment is used in translation, those three are used once. So the codon will be AUG, the next one will be CGU, then the next one will be CUA. If it was overlapping, which it isn't, the first one would be AUG, the next one would be UGC. And that doesn't happen, and you'll be able to see why in more detail and more visually when we look at translation. So the final molecule we need to look at is tRNA. Um, tRNA molecules look a little bit like a clover. I'll point out what we're looking at here in a bit more detail. So it's an RNA molecule. tRNA stands for transfer RNA because its job is to transfer amino acids to the correct place along the mRNA. We've got a three prime end, which is the longer looking end and a five prime end. And if you looked at the other videos, if you've forgotten what that means, it tells you the orientation of the RNA molecule. The shape of it is maintained by hydrogen bonds and each of these kind of mostly squares some of them are kind of curved each of those represents a nucleotide just like you would have seen before previously the rna nucleotides at the bottom importantly is an anticodon so that anticodon will be complementary to codons on the mrna molecule now for example the anticodon to aug would be uac so this anticodon that fit into onto AUG on the mRNA, which again will become a lot more clear when you look at translation and put all of this together, 
the um, anticode on here would be UAC and that is how the tRNA puts the amino acids into the correct place because they only match a certain codon. Up here where there is nothing that's where the amino acid would be attached. Now the amino acid requires ATP to be attached to the TNA, tRNA molecule so this is what this is the place where energy will be used in, um, in protein synthesis in the translation process. Uh, we'll point that out again when we look at the whole process but it's worth mentioning now. And that is our tRNA molecule and our mRNA molecule. So now we've got kind of the building blocks ready to look at the whole process which is protein synthesis which we'll do in the next video.